Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Yes, I know my hair looks wet, I just got out of the shower, I want it to look clean for you all, but at least I put on a shirt and pants. I didn't put on pants. But in my defense, pants are an oppressive patriarchal institution, so I'm just fighting back against the system. Anyway, we have one more group to cover in our series looking at humanity's best allies. Giants. Every one of us knows giants in our personal lives. They're usually harmless, bumbling idiots, so we tolerate them. But even when they're our best of friends, we live with a subconscious fear of them. You know what I'm talking about. You all have that giant friend that is nice to you, but somewhere deep down you know there's a chance they could get angry and decide to crush and eat you. But most of the time they just help you reach things in high places and scare away wild animals. So today we are going to take the time to look at some of the most prominent giants and races of giants in history in order to better understand their place among the allies of humanity. As always, if you enjoy the video, please remember to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. First up is Fezzik. Fezzik was the Turkish giant in The Princess Bride, employed by the Sicilian swindler Vizzini. Fezzik had supreme strength, being so strong that he didn't even understand how powerful he was. It is noteworthy that Fezzik worked for a criminal and was willing to carry out dirty deeds for him. A possible defense there could be that Fezzik didn't know any better and trusted Vizzini. But Fezzik didn't really seem all that dumb, especially compared to other giants. When Vizzini died though, Fezzik helped Wesley and his crew defeat the dastardly Prince Humperdinck. So it's probably true that his actions and behaviors are at least partly influenced by his employer. I'm not sure Fezzik had much of a backbone, and this seems to be the case for a few giants out there. That said, while Vizzini was a bad guy, as far as we know, Fezzik didn't do anything blatantly evil while working for him. There was a part of Fezzik that was kind-hearted, and he was even careful to be gentle with normies, especially given his obscene strength. He would beat women, but only lightly. An action that, to be fair, has been recommended by some mental health professionals. While Fezzik was quite strong, he did have some weak areas, such as naivety and overconfidence, which could at times lead him to be submitted by people in lower weight classes. Overall, if it's the big picture of your life that really matters, Fezzik was a great ally of humans, helping them to overcome tyranny within their own communities. When genius physicist Dr. Bruce Banner had an experiment with gamma radiation go awry, his genetic makeup was altered, and he gained the somewhat uncontrollable ability to transform into a giant green humanoid beast when he gets angry. As far as raw strength goes, the Hulk might be the most gifted giant on this list. He can easily lift and or crush structures around him. The extent of his strength is largely unknown, and in times of great rage, he has been known to be capable of unfathomable godlike feats. And unlike other giants, his size does not come at the cost of movement ability, as the Hulk can sprint at high speed, leap great distances, and has excellent agility. He's also incredibly durable, and is able to withstand impacts that would kill almost any other living creature. The Hulk is widely considered one of the greatest heroes of mankind. After all, he has helped the Avengers fight off numerous villains that have threatened the existence of humanity. But his role as an ally of mankind is not as clear-cut as one might think. This is where the Hulk's greatest and for the most part only weakness comes in. He can't really control himself in Hulk form outside of brief stints as Professor Hulk. Rather, he can pose a danger to humans in Hulk form. He can be manipulated by dark forces into attacking innocents and even his own superhero friends. But even if he's not attacking the good guys, if he is simply raging and out of control, the incidental damage caused can be catastrophic. Avengers is a family-friendly franchise, but in reality, hundreds of people probably died in the course of his battle with Iron Man. Giants in Game of Thrones were some of the most valuable non-human combatants a human army could have in their ranks. They were probably second, albeit a distant second, to dragons in that regard. Through the ages, the population of giants decreased in the world, and so giants were somewhat rare in the time that Game of Thrones took place. It's unknown as to how giants would treat humans if they were larger in number. What we do know, though, is that they fought with honor and passion for the free folk north of the Wall. Giants were some of the strongest beings in and around the Seven Kingdoms, and were physically powerful enough to take on dozens of human soldiers at a time. Their size and strength was good for all sorts of other tasks as well, especially tasks that humans lacked the strength to accomplish. Giants were also dumber than the average human, which means that they couldn't really be counted on to be the intellectual or strategic leaders on the battlefield. They mostly just pounded away at their enemies. The history of giants in Game of Thrones does not reflect that they were eager allies of humans. But there have been enough instances of them fighting among human forces, whether by choice or not, that they can at least be said to have been a useful ally of humanity. Carl was the giant that Edward Bloom met early on in his adventures across the world. Carl was a cynical, distrustful, and super depressed giant. But to be fair, Edward first met Carl in the mid-20th century. 
at a time when Americans distrusted giants almost as much as communists and thought that giants ate people, which of course they do not, while communists do, though only when they run out of bread. So even though Carl wasn't the friendliest giant in the world and didn't do much for humanity as a whole, he should get credit for having been able to form a friendship with Edward despite the fact that he was seen as a monster by the humans he grew up around. Additionally, there's no doubt that Edward was safer traveling across the country with a giant by his side. There were some good and bad giants in Harry Potter. Hagrid himself was only half-giant, actually, and his own half-brother Grop, a full-blood, was a much dumber and more violent giant who only came around thanks to Hagrid's influence. Hagrid himself attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry as a kid, until he was expelled after being framed for crimes he didn't commit by the incel Tom Riddle. But thanks to Albus Dumbledore, Hagrid was made into the gameskeeper of Hogwarts and thus allowed to live on school grounds, where he watched over the school. Hagrid boasted the superhuman strength and endurance typical of giants and had excellent skills in physical combat, but thanks to being a wizard, he also accomplished a mastery of magic, making him one of the more powerful giants on this list. Hagrid specialized in non-verbal magic and in the care of magical creatures as fit his rugged appearance and overall persona. Most importantly, Hagrid had the purest of hearts and was a great hero, protecting the students at Hogwarts and keeping them safe from dark forces such as those of Voldemort. Though seemingly somewhat of an oblivious person without the most acute mental faculties, Hagrid was actually a lot more keen than one might think, and he knew when trouble was afoot. Above all, without Hagrid, it's likely Harry Potter wouldn't have survived to become the great hero that he did. With that said, Hagrid is a great hero in the annals of human history. Giants in the Warhammer fantasy universe were large, unintelligent nomads that wandered the world in search of food in battle. They weren't large in number like some other Warhammer races, but they had incredible strength that allowed them to make war with much bigger forces. They certainly weren't friends of humans either. They would often ravage human villages, eating and killing everything, sometimes in that order. Not only were they not allies of humans, but they would at times even join the Greenskin armies. Giants in the Warcraft universe are much harder to generalize about. Sure, they were all giant in size for the most part, but they varied in terms of race, intelligence, and allegiance. For instance, there were mountain giants who were made up of stone and flora. These giants protected the natural environment from those who would seek to harm it. They were largely good-natured, and though they wouldn't necessarily befriend other races, they stood against the Burning Legion and committed themselves to banishing their evil forces from the world. By that measure, humans were happy they existed. Sea giants, on the other hand, were much more aggressive and hostile towards other creatures, including humans. They weren't evil-natured, but cared little for the lives of other beings and wouldn't hesitate to destroy those who polluted the ocean. Okay, maybe there's a theme here of giants being environmentalists. Still, it's hard to give giants a blanket label here. Some of them were good to humans, and others were not. The Frost Giants are definite enemies of man, as they are a conquering race and have waged war on Asgardians, basically extra beautiful superhumans. Hailing from the realm of Jotunheim, the Frost Giants once used a weapon called the Casket of Ancient Winters to attack the Earth in an attempt to subjugate humanity, before the Asgardians stopped them. Frost Giants are powerful beings, and are as strong as one would expect giants to be. But when you live in a universe with Thor, that's not such an advantage. They do have an above average ability to withstand the cold though, but tropical climates will kill them. The Frost Giants are an easy one. As we said at the top, they are no allies of humans. There were a few different types of giants in Lord of the Rings, but the most prominent were Ents, an ancient race of humanoid trees that protected the forests. Though I suppose in this case that's somewhat of a self-interested endeavor. Ents were super powerful, being able to easily tear apart rock. They had a bit of a grumpy side, but ultimately were supremely noble and honorable, and when the forces of good, including humans, needed their help, the Ents were there to fight by their side. The fact that they stood and fought against Sauron's forces should make all of you out there, including the anti-environmentalists, aware of just how catastrophic the burning of the Amazon rainforest is. Those trees could literally be the difference between humans being able to fight off an alien invasion and not. Finally, giants were found throughout the world of Elder Scrolls, often living in the wilderness. By the way, I don't want to get off track here, but I do feel like super tall people should live in the woods and only come out when we need them to fight an intergalactic war or reach things on a high shelf. We can't be wasting money building things to accommodate tall people. I'm sorry. Plus, they make me feel short. Anyway, giants in Elder Scrolls had tremendous strength, but were only moderately intelligent. As far as their relationships with humans went, well, it's complicated. The two races didn't interact with each other much and largely were peaceful towards each other. But there was a history of war between humans and giants, some wars, but mostly local conflict. 
If you had asked the humans, they'd have said the giants started it, and if you had asked the giants, they'd probably have said, bah, 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 bah. In other words, it's unclear who did what. Making matters worse, giant body parts were believed to have mystical qualities among some humans, and thus giants were often killed for their parts. On the other hand, there were rare cases of human-giant intercourse that produced half-giant offspring. In all, giants and Elder Scrolls weren't really allies of humans, but weren't enemies of theirs either. And for the most part, this is the case with most giants in history. Just like in your town, where the tall people around you mostly keep to themselves. It's probably for the best. Leave tall people alone, and they won't crush and eat you. Anyway, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed this series covering humanity's best allies. Definitely give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and let me know in the comments below which group that we covered you think is the best ally of humanity. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.